Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. So today I just want to actually run through a number of formula techniques in DAX. I'm going to combine them one on top of the other and I'm going to, uh, in doing so, be able to calculate well, why are there certain changes in my data sets and that's that's ultimately what I, what I want to extract. So I don't want to talk about too much about it, I just want to actually do it and as we work through it I'm going to show you how you can do this yourselves, you know, how you can layer these formulas on, how you can branch them out into these really great cucks and, and get this quality insight or get these quality insights. So it's all about, okay, well, what's causing the change here, right? So what I want to do, and just briefly, is I want to, I want to, from a cumulative perspective, see, okay, well, how are we performing, uh, say, in any time period versus another time period? And then I want to break down, okay, well, why is that change occurring? So in this case, I'm going to do quarter on quarter. So I'm going to grab um, my quarter and year uh, dimension, and I'm going to turn that into a slicer. And then say I select quarter two, and then I bring in, say, my, uh, we'll do profits, eh? We'll do profits this time. And so I bring in my profits. And then I want to compare, okay, profits this quarter. I want to compare them to last quarter, okay? So how do I do that? Well, what I've got to do is um, use the time intelligence calc date and date add. It's, it's, it's a really, really versatile calculation. And so then I'm going to go date add. And then I'm going to put in my date column, minus one, and then quarter. So that's all you've got to do to uh, compare or to, to jump back in time or any time period, right? And date add enables you to do that pretty quickly. So then I'm going to drag that in there. And so now we're comparing, say, total profits in this quarter to quarter one, quarter two to quarter one. Now if I change this into a chart like so, you'll see that it's a little bit busy, to be honest. <coughs> it doesn't actually um, show us insight that well, in my view, you know? You, you could actually change this to a um, more... Um, ho ho uh, lower granular detail, <coughs> I think it's lower, um, but I think cumulative, I always say, well, if you want to identify trends, cumulative is the way to do it. So so what, we're, what are we trying to do today? Well, we're trying to see the change, we're trying to see the trend, you know, what, 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 when is that trend occurring and why is it occurring? And so how we do that is then we just need to jump to cumulative total. So I'm going to go cumulative profits, and uh, just give me a second. And you go calculates total profits and so you could read the Q, this pattern is just really is very reusable and then i'm going to go all all selected then dates and then i uh, go date is less than or equal to the max day so i won't go into detail um every different part of this um, you'll be able to find that in, uh, in a lot of places online, right? It's just about how you can combine it. That's what I want to get to. So I'm going to turn this back into a table, which I always like to do. And then I'm going to bring my cumulative profits in. So now you see we've got 3803, but then instead of um, jumping to the, just that day, it's actually going that day plus that day, which is exactly what we want. Okay, and then I'm just going to get rid of these. And then we can jump from here to cumulative profits LQ for last quarter. And then I'm going to put in here, uh, really, profits LQ, right? And now I can drag that in, and then very quickly we can then turn this into a um, cumulative total chart. So you might have seen examples from me that I do similar things to this, and I really like um, these sort of examples, um, or the, sorry, these sort of visualizations, because yes, you can identify trends really quickly, and I'm going to show you um, a good example of that shortly. Now, what we want to also do to, to really highlight the trend is say we, we want to actually see, okay, what's the difference between these cumulative totals? So um, I'm going to go cumulative diff um, in profits. And then all we're going to do is go cumulative profits minus cumulative profits last year. As easy as that, right? And then I'm just going to copy this down. So I'm working away pretty quick, and um, and I'm sorry if uh, I'm not diving deep into them. But this is the the idea of this video is just to walk through all of the different things that you can do to to find these insights, right? And if you want to dive into any any individual part of it, you can in time. Okay, so now we've got now we can see really quickly the cumulative difference. But now I want to actually extract even more information because this is okay. I mean, this is showing us some change. Like, why is that actually occurring? But then we need to look even deeper. We need to go to other dimensions. We need to look at our customers. We also need to look at our products. Why are the changes occurring there, right? And so we can then come and grab, say, our customer customers here. And we can use these. We can use the calculations we've already got. So I can go total sales. Um, actually, no, we're doing profits, aren't we? 
So I'm going to go profits, and then I'm going to bring in profits last quarter. And so if we then change that up to say, sort that by that, you'll quickly see why those big differences are occurring, and then we can achieve exactly the same thing um, by utilizing just a different dimension. So I'm going to bring in my products dimension here, like so. So we might want to probably rearrange these a little bit just to make them um, more visible. So it's really intuitive and easy to understand what we're actually looking at. Okay, so we can really quickly now see the di why are these differences occurring, right? We might want to change, say, you know, the um, the colors, etc., so that they stand out a bit more. So let's do that. And so now, very quickly. We can see the trend here, we can see when that trend is going up and down, and then we can also see, okay, well, here are the um, here are the, you know, the the differences. Here are the here are the reasons why there is differences by, for, by our customers and also via our products. Now, I want to show you one other thing that I really like as well, is that um to bring in calculated columns here because um you know this is this is all good, but then say for instance we might want to jump into um, so we might want to segment. So say we really want to understand well why are our, which customers are causing this change, right? So we can we can we can create a slicer like this, and I can bring in um, make this multi-select, and so I can select a range of these different customers now, which is cool. But there's a lot of customers here if you think about it. Like this list goes, this, you know, we're 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 a high frequency sales um, organization, right? And um, you know, there's a lot of customers there, so we might want to break these customers down even more. So check this out. So what we can do is we can break up these customers, and you can do this via calculated columns. This is where calculated columns are really powerful when you put them into your lookup tables. And so your lookup tables, remember, are these ones up here. And so if I go and have a look at my customers, you can see here that all it is is just a customer name. It looks like I've got about 100 customers. And so if I go and create another column here, I'm just going to say I'm going to say this is overall sales. Um, you could you could actually break this down even further. Okay, I just want to give you an example. So I could say um, overall sales, right? And then I'm just going to go total sales. And um, you'll see now that we have a number. So obviously we've got highest to lowest. And then we could create another column in here and say, okay, well, um, sales group. And I could say, I could say we could use, this is where switch is, is, is a really cool um, function. And then from here, I'm gonna go, okay, well, if overall sales, if overall sales is greater than say, let's say um, 68,000, um, we're gonna say great, um, great customer. And if it is, if it is, let's just quickly go down here and we'll go down here. Um, so if it's greater than, so let's go, let's go 55,000. We'll just say, okay, well, this is an okay client. And then if it's less than or equal to 55,000, we're gonna go, this is a poor client. And then if it's nothing, we're gonna go blank, but it's never gonna be nothing. Cool, so now we have this dimension, right? So that's really cool. Um, and we can use, and that's why this logic is, is so great to have inside your calculated columns, because what we can do is we can create another filter here. So check this out, I can create another filter up here. I can go, um, actually it's sales group, I can change my sales group. And then I can place a filter here. So we could say, okay, here are great clients. And um, is that even great? Uh, oh, it's because I've done total sales, haven't I? And this is slightly differently, but this is slightly different. Um, let's actually let's actually turn this to total profit. So it's actually um, no, I can't, I can't. Anyway, okay, let's just stick with total sales. That's fine. You understand the technique, I'm sure. But now, but this is what that's what I want to show you, right? Is that through using this technique, I was able to then have a look at okay, well, we can dive even further um, into uh, in, into our you know our, our, our client sets. Um, by breaking it down by this additional dimension. So really, it's really, it's really, really powerful stuff. And you'll see as I select here, so what I can do is, let's just make this non-sec, I can jump between um, these customers 
and these uh, this customer filter will actually change from my great okay and poor customers and so that's how you can really say okay so here are great customers right and we can see okay well the trend the divergence in trend was caused very very you know happened pretty pretty early on um, and uh, but it looks like they're good sales but their profits uh, aren't as good that's quite interesting isn't it so sales so this is our great sales customers but their profits aren't as good as a prior year so there we go even 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 then that's pretty 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 good insight isn't it um, or last quarter sorry but then we can and then here we can look at okay, what what why is which products are selling bad versus good um, versus um, uh, versus also our customers etc etc Okay, so look, with this example, I wanted to just run through a, a really, really good one, a really quality one that works over sort of a scenario, right? Like what is causing the change in the data? And you know, within 10 minutes or so, we've really been able to dive in and, and discover, you know, a lot of why that change is actually occurring. Maybe we might want to rejig a couple of functions here. I mean, ultimately, I probably should have made this because of profits instead of sales, and that would have um, got us better insights um, or more meaningful insight. But but um, but anyway, it doesn't um, doesn't matter in this case. It's the technique of how you can apply this in your own environments. Okay, cool. All the best with this one. Um, you can op you can uh, you can download this resource if you like. Just go to invest in enterprise DNA TV resources, um, and certainly subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Um, I'm putting out a lot of content out there, trying to do it very frequently. So um, certainly want to get your hands on it um, as soon as as soon as it comes out. Okay, all the very best. Um, hopefully you uh, can apply some of these, um, some of the range of these different techniques. You know, that's the power of Power BI is really combining all of these ones all together. So all the best with it um, and um, good luck. Cheers.